buried under this heat sink and in this B360 Gigabyte motherboard is the Intel i5-8600. It is a pretty impressive 3.1 GHz base clock, 6 core, 6 thread uh, CPU. It technically has a boost clock to somewhere around 4.2 all core, which is pretty impressive, although it does uh, kind of vary based on what cooling uh, you have on the CPU and also the motherboard you have, so just bear that in mind when you're uh, going for it. But it's still a very impressive CPU that we're going to take a look in the video, so do stick around. So to compare these to the original Coffee Lake uh, 8700 and 8600 and 8350K CPUs, these ones are obviously locked. They also are coming out at the same time as the H370 and B360 platforms, which also don't allow for overclocking. So while well, you can technically put these in a Z370 uh, you know, motherboard, especially if it's had a BIOS update to fully support them, um, and then you can do a little bit of, sort of base clock overclocking and stuff like that, these are not multiplier unlocked CPUs, so you can't go about your usual uh, kind of easy overclocking uh, for these sorts of chips. These are definitely locked and uh, Intel really wants to make you pay for that extra privilege of unlocking them with actually some uh, better overall base performance with the A600K being a 3.6 gigahertz base, whereas this one is 3.1. Now, as I mentioned, it does boost to uh, somewhere around 4.2 in my testing. It seems with an all core load specifically, it will boost to 4.1, but when you're doing a more single threaded or in theory light workload, it'll actually boost all cores to 4.2 and I haven't seen anything higher than that even when doing single threaded benchmarks so it looks like that's its maximum. I haven't had too much information from Intel here so uh, this is more just what I've uh, observed in testing. Now a few key things to mention uh, as with the original Coffee Lake CPUs and with a lot of the Intel mainstream platforms most of your peripherals are attached through the chipset including things like M.2 SSDs which does mean that your performance on M.2 SSDs will likely be limited also, it will depend on what motherboard you're using uh, to actually connect those. A lot of them will only have one M.2 SSD slot available to you. Uh, some of them, like this Gaming 3 board from Gigabyte, will actually have two, but that's something that Gigabyte has implemented after the fact and not something that Intel uh, kind of recommends or uh, directly enables, so just bear that in mind. And there's also a couple of new interesting updates. Uh, you can also now use the Intel CNVI connector. Or it's technically an M.2 slot, but they've released a set of new M.2 are kind of CMVI enabled uh, Wi-Fi modules. These are pretty impressive 802.11ac connections, so up to 1700-ish megabits per second, which is pretty impressive for built-in Wi-Fi and has uh, support for things like 2x2 multi-user MIMO and a lot of other interesting functionality that most built-in Wi-Fi modules don't have. And just before we jump into the results for this, I want to actually mention temperatures as that's something that the uh, the 8700 and 8600 k CPUs really kind of suffered with in their initial launch. This one was actually incredibly impressive. Under full core load, just with this uh, Cooler Master Master Air Pro 4 uh, air cooler heatsink, uh, the, the maximum temperature I saw with this was about 55 degrees Celsius. Now that's not at a full Prime 95 load, you're probably looking at 60 or 70 with this cooler on a full Prime 95 load, but in standard gaming use and things like that, it was sitting between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius, which is excellent for this style of Intel chip. So with that said, let's take a look at the performance results. I do want to mention that I was using a GTX 980 for a lot of these tests because uh, at the time of filming, I don't have access to all of the CPUs that I've previously tested with. And while I'd like to be able to rebench them with a GTX 1080 or 1080i or any future based graphics card, uh, because I don't have access to those chips, I'm not able to update those results. So to actually be able to give you a comparison, I have to use an older graphics card. So especially for the gaming results, just bear that one in mind. So starting off with the Cinebench scores, we're looking at a respectable 984 and 176 for multi and single threaded respectively. Compared to their newer counterparts like the 8700K, they do fall a fair bit short, but uh, it's actually fairly comparable to the 7700K, which is really pretty impressive, at least in multi-threaded. In Asus Realbench, I was really happy to see the improvement here over the older generation 77 and 7600Ks, although it seems to be a little bit lower than most of the Ryzen chips, including the 1600, which is really this chip's main competitor. In 3D Mark Fire Strike, again, just looking at the physics score, it's a little bit lower than I would have liked to have seen, again, comparing even to the 1600, but still a decent bit higher than the uh, 7600K and still pretty decent to the 7700K. 
In gaming results, these are all pretty similar, as even at 1080p, you're really not looking at a massive difference in FPS for your CPU. Obviously, the comparison between, say, the 7700K and the 1800X is fairly big there, but again, between the Intel chips, you're really not seeing too much. Same story here with Dirt Rally, where it's a little bit lower than the, you know, stuff like 77 and 8700Ks, but still re relatively in the ballpark of, uh, you know, a lot of these chips that you can see here, so pretty impressive. So as you saw, especially compared to the 7600, this is a really impressive CPU. When you're comparing it to the Ryzen chips, there's definitely a few better options available in a lot of uh, areas. Uh, the gaming results were actually fairly uh, similar between the two, uh, you know, from this and most of the Ryzen lineup. Although again, at the more budget level, uh, again, the Intel chips do shine a little bit better just on that single core performance and a little bit on the clock speed uh, kind of side of things. So just Put that one in mind if you're specifically buying a gaming chip or a gaming system uh, but otherwise in terms of the overall uh, kind of imp uh, performance improvements especially as i said compared to the 7600 the 8600 here uh, in you know the, the encoding benchmarks in asus real bench and a lot of the other more uh, kind of actual compute based tasks were much faster which is very impressive so do i recommend this cpu well yes it's a decent chip it runs relatively cool and doesn't suck too much power which is definitely nice in terms of the the overall performance it's a pretty decent gaming chip and while it is locked and there's uh, certain functionalities that uh, especially if you're going with something like a b360 or even h370 motherboard uh, are locked and, and kind of hidden away from you it's still a, a pretty nice value at the time of filming and obviously this will fluctuate depending on when you watch this and where you are in the world but for for, for a general consensus yeah it's a pretty decent chip now how does it stack up to the ryzen lineup well we're actually going to see a new ryzen lineup fairly shortly so i'd really like to be able to compare my results for this to the new Ryzen lineup and we can give a proper comparison then but for the most part for the existing lineup the Ryzen chips are definitely still very competitive in this market the 1600 for example is a pretty similar value proposition to this chip and often performs very similarly or it's slightly worse in things like gaming applications but with a Ryzen chip you can overclock it and get better performance results especially in things like gaming whereas with this one you can't. Now with all of that out of the way I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below is this the sort of chip that you're you know desperate to get your hands on or is it something that no you'll stick with your your ryzen or your you know existing chip and if you are sticking with your, your existing chip i'd love to hear what you have in the comments down below so with all that out of the way let's take a look at the scoring for me this is going to be a 4.5 vive money and i think a 4.5 for performance as well in terms of functionality because a lot of the you know overclocking and uh, even just motherboard functionality for these sorts of platforms is kind of taken away from you it's going to be a 4 styling it's a cpu so it's a 5 and in terms of the tech team dv score it's going to be a 4.5 and a worth money award it's definitely worth your money if you're interested in picking up a cpu that you're not going to be bothering overclocking with it's not something you're even thinking about but you just want a decent performing cpu that will you know turbo nicely play games well and uh, is you know not too bad in in all other respects and with scoring done that only really leaves me to say thank you for watching if you're interested in seeing any more information about the cpu or you want to check out pricing when and where you watch this take a look at the link in the description down below that will take you to your local amazon store and well you can get that sort of information if you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a monday wednesday friday and saturday basis then feel free to take a look at the patreon link in the description down below where you can support me directly or the amazon and other clubs affiliate links where you can also support me there too you can also check out the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and if you're also uh, you know just kind of searching for new videos there will be a couple over here for you to check out as well otherwise thank you for watching hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions leave it in, in the comments down below and we'll see you all in the next video